Okay. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello, 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 hello. How you doing? What do you think of the set? Space and I had trouble with the lighting today, but I think it unintentionally came out so, like, 90s, cheap elementary school learning video. And I think it's hilarious. Bryce is right. Thank you for the 19 months. Uh, mean, thank you. Looks like the bat. So immersive. Yeah, I think it's pretty funny. The reason that we have uh, this background is because um, Space is a genius. And I can draw today. I saw this, uh, I saw a light board thing. It's like $4,000 and it's a literal like glass, like piece of glass that you draw on and then you reverse the video. And so it looks like it's being drawn in front of you. And I've done, I've used the whiteboard that's back here to draw, but then I have to be turned around. So today I can teach you guys like this smile and I can draw next to me. It also can be bigger. It's an ugly smile. Um, but yeah, so we'll see how this goes today. Um, sorry, I was trying to erase. <laughs> There's like a weird, f oh, never mind, it's gone. Anyway, um, so it's going great. It's going great. Can you draw a mustache on yourself? Oh, it's too big. You know, I did my best. That's really hard to do, okay? It's a tall order. <laughs> Draw yourself a hat. It's a little taller than <laughs> I underestimated my staggering height. Blue, thank you for the five gifted subs. Guys, before we go into the stream, do we have an SD card? I didn't ask about that. Because we should make this into a YouTube video if we can. But I'll I'll do this first. It doesn't need to be in the YouTube video, so if you want to find that. I'm going to show you. We have our Valentine's Day event. This is so Nickelodeon Super Bowl vibes. Oh my god, it is. Um... We have our Valentine's Day event coming up on Wednesday this week because Valentine's Day is Wednesday this week, okay? Um, the Valentine's Day event is a fundraiser for Alveus. Uh, we will be celebrating Stompy's birthday, number one. We will be raffling off plushies that I have made, number two. And we will be giving out uh, Valentine's Day themed enrichment to all the animals, number three. Okay, I'm going to show you guys the plushies that I have made for tomorrow. This is Miley. Again, these are up for raffle on Wednesday. That is, what are the prices for the raffles? $25. You win no matter what, you win something, not necessarily a plushie. $25 gets you a signed postcard and an entry for the raffle. So you should donate $25 because you get something anyway. What? But if you do $50, then you get two entries and a signed postcard. If you do $75, you get three entries and a signed postcard. $100, four entries and a signed postcard. International. Yes. So this is Miley. Um, the top three donators get to pick which one they want. Otherwise, it will be random plushie giveaways. But they're all really good. As you can see by this very accurate George. Yes. Wonderful. Um, the stream's going to be on my channel on Wednesday. This is Georgie. That's Miley. This is Nilla Wafer. I didn't have a pattern for this one, so she's a little bit messed up. But, you know, is what it is. Here's Siren. She's a little skinny. But Siren is skinny. Did you make these? Yes. Look, she's missing tail feathers. I made these with my hands. Tico? This one's pretty good. Don't look at any of them from the front, okay? You will regret it. If you look at them from the front, don't. 
Just look at them from the sides only. This is Patchy. <laughs> Patchy, one eye. Huh? Amazing. An isopod? Marty? You died. Chat, wake up. Wake up! <laughs> Marty? Zebra isopod? Ah, amazing. BB? Spanish orange isopod? Bah, bah. Mia? Amazing African gray, red tail. This one's not that bad from the front. Jalapeno? With the missing ear and all. This one was really hard to make. I think I must have sewed this on inside out, because I don't know why he's like sticks out like that. It's like a special feature. It's like he's kicking. See? It's mechanical. Barbara? Ooh, wow, amazing. Abbott or coconut, whichever one you prefer. I'm not going to make two of them. I don't think. I am going to try to make Hank today. I have not made Hank yet. Noodle? Nugget? This one's real. You could throw this at somebody. It could really do some damage. Are these for a fundraiser? Yes, these are for the Valentine's Day event tomorrow. They are going to be up for raffle tomorrow. And the last two are incredibly cursed, and I don't really want to talk about them. I did use a pattern for Winnie, but it told me to include seam allowance, and I didn't because I was like, oh, it can't be that big of a deal, and I didn't want to. So what, tomorrow? I, Wednesday. Valentine's Day is Wednesday. It's so cursed. I don't know what happened. I don't know why I'm missing like a whole neck. I don't know if I'm missing a whole part. I don't think that I am. I don't know why her feet are so small. And I know that it looks like a hippo, and I don't know why. I really did try. But I did put some hair on her head. That's nice. Winnie. And this is Stompy. All right. This is probably... No, I think Winnie's the worst one, but this is a very close second. I don't know what the hell happened here. I thought that I could size up the... the here, I used this pattern. Okay, this pattern is for a bird. So it like looks like it's supposed to, like bird pattern. And then I was like, oh, for Stompy, I'll just make it bigger and I'll make the neck longer. And it doesn't, you can't just eyeball sizing up a pattern like that. It's just not how it works. So it's really scuffed. I didn't know how to do the blue and like, but I did give him little wings. So that part's accurate. Um, little legs. This is the birthday boy. So these are all up for raffle tomorrow for the Valentine's Day fundraiser. Again, if you donate $25, you get a signed postcard. I'm signing all the postcards. So you will get a signed postcard, but that's also a raffle entry. If you donate $50, you get two raffle entries and a signed postcard. $75, three raffle entries and a signed postcard. $100, four raffle entries and a signed postcard. Then the top three donators of tomorrow will get to pick which plushie they want. I will maybe make more on Wednesday, not tomorrow. Did I say tomorrow again? Am I losing my mind? On Wednesday is Valentine's Day, the 14th. Sorry. This fundraiser is on Wednesday at 12 o'clock on my channel. Valentine's Day. It's on Valentine's Day. We have not shown the postcard yet. You've said it like 10 times. It's Wednesday, the 14th. It's the Valentine's Day event. Okay? Just, it's Valentine's Day, which is on Wednesday. Okay? Okay. Huh? I mean, 4K is the dream, but... It can be 1080. It's not the end of the world. Just need a good thumbnail. <laughs> okay. 
Yes, this Wednesday is Valentine's Day, you guys. You got to get it together. And if I make more plushies today, then there will be more up for raffle tomorrow. I will do my best. Oh, we will see. We will see. All right. It is Monday today. The Valentine's Day event is on Valentine's Day, which is on Wednesday, the 14th. Okay. Do you know anything about rusty spotted cats? It's for a project. Okay. I'm not, I'm not going to be your research right now. Go Google it. What the heck? <laughs> no. Oh, you mean for, t okay. I am doing an educational stream today though. So it's kind of, it's kind of fine that you asked that. Guys, today is a really big day. You want to know why? Because it is the, uh, the second edition of my sex and love in the animal kingdom stream. Nilad, thank you for the prime. Jelly My Donuts, thank you for the prime. Texas, thank you for the prime. Is this recording? Okay. Um, yes, sex and love in the animal kingdom. Everybody, close your eyes for just a second. But be ready to open them again. <sighs> Welcome back. Okay, open your eyes. <laughs> Will there be cool bug facts? Oh, you know it. I kind of liked it zoomed in, actually. Like, yeah, I kind of like that. Do you guys like this better? I don't need the table for the stream. I think it's kind of funny. <laughs> Here I am. Recording. YouTube, welcome to my sex and love in the animal kingdom video, where I teach you guys about sex and love in the animal kingdom, with an emphasis on... Sex and love. I don't think they can see me right now. Can they? Why are they saying void? Oh, you're saying this is a void. Okay. Um, if you don't know anything about sex, this is the video for you. Like and subscribe, and it'll help. All right. Sorry. Ignore that. Also, sorry for looking at you. Um, all right. So last year, I did this stream... Um, I did a re I did a, a whole thing about all the different types of penises, uh, the acoustic penises, the detachable penises, the exploding penises, the biggest penises, the smallest penises, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This year, my route is a little bit different, and I've decided to do um, more like a storyline of of a bunch of different animal stories and the way their sex lives work. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stories to tell you guys. I'm going to tell you the titles of those stories and then we'll go in and talk about them one by one. And then you'll learn it's like a romance novel. Here we are. Uh, story number one, can't miss an eight inch clitoris. Story number two. Oh, I actually don't know what order these are. Don't worry about the numbers. I'm just going to tell you the titles. We have Can't Miss an 8-Inch Clitoris. We have Death by Incestual Orgy. We have The Three-Foot-Long Exploding Sperm Bomb. We have Uno Reverse Genitalia Edition. We have To Love is to Disintegrate and Die. We have... When your kids have an orgy inside of you and then you explode. We have birth, incest, and death speed run. And then our last story is a classic, uh, the one and done. That's what we'll be going through today. Um, we're going to start with uh, can't miss an 8-inch clitoris. Do you guys know what has an 8-inch clitoris by chance nice yeah um hyenas hyenas have an eight inch long clitoris you want to see it ready 
This is an Aiden. This is a hyena clitoris. This is a female hyena. The picture on the right um, is that clitoris, which is crazy. You can't really tell just by looking at a hyena whether or not it's male or female because the female genitalia resembles male genitalia so much. No, that's not a penis. It is a clitoris. The picture on the left here, uh, even more interesting, uh, kind of shows the anatomy of this clitoris. Um, not only do they copulate through the clitoris, into it, into it. Someone asked, is the urethra in the clitoris? Yes, they also pee through it. Worse than that, note this picture on the left, they also birth through it. They pee, they boink, and they birth through their clitoris. Note before I go through this whole stream, I'm gonna say boink a lot. And when I say boink, I mean have sex. Just so you know. Um, so female hi spotted hyena is the only extant mammal that mates and gives birth through penis-like clitoris. Why? <laughs> you may be wondering why. Oh, also their labia. Do you guys know what that is? Oh my God. You guys know what that is, right? Okay, cool. Excellent. Great. <laughs> Perfect. Their labia is fused together and it resembles a scrotum also. So not only do they have genitalia that looks like a penis, they also have genitalia that looks like a scrotum, um, which is pretty impressive. Why though? Hyenas, females are socially dominant as it should be, right? Because they're socially dominant though, when baby hyenas are born, the, do the dominant females don't want females to come up and take over. So a lot of times they'll be really aggressive with those babies, even kill those babies. And so it's in the baby's best interest to look like a male. That's one theory, is to keep the female baby safe from the dominant adult females. Another theory um, is avoiding forced copulation. They have to insert, male hyenas have to insert into there which is very hard to do without the female being willing to let that happen. So that's another theory is to avoid forced copulation. The females get to decide, you know, when they want to boink, right? Um, and then when they're adults too, because the females are um, socially dominant, they have high levels of testosterone, high ranking females are the first to eat and the females are more important, smile. I'm gonna be honest, I don't think, oh, tragic though, with this system, 10% of first time hyena mothers die in birthing because it's very dangerous to birth through a canal that narrow and that long. Um, and then 60% of cubs, this one's crazy, 60% 60, 60 of cubs suffocate because their umbilical cords are too short for the birth canal. So they gotta make it out fast, otherwise they die. 60%. It's awful. So it's not the best system. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't think that this was very interesting. People said that they wanted to hear more about mammals, and so I was like, okay, I'll include another mammal in there. What's an interesting mammal? I guess hyenas have a very long clitoris. There you go. Now you're, there's, your, there's your party fun fact of the day, okay? But that's pretty much it to this story. The other stories get a little bit more interesting, but honestly, insect sex is just way more interesting. Um, so that's it for hyenas. The next story that we have is the birth, incest, and death speed run. Does anybody have a guess as to what species this is about? Fleas, orcas, mayflies, cockroach, fruit fly. I haven't seen anybody say it. Um, it's about the fig wasp. Fig wasp. You guys familiar? 
This is a fig wasp. Just a little guy, and this is a fig. Figs, fig wasps, birth, incest, and death speedrun. I'm going to have you guys watch a little video, and then I'm going to talk to you about it. Here you go. There's no sand. Oh. Hold. Squeeze that are with fig wasps. They're only two millimeters long. Oh my god. Just just watch the tiny video. fig wasps. They're only two millimeters long. The figs have a unique partnership with these insects. A female wasp has the space of just a single day when the fig will allow her to burrow into the undeveloped fruit. It's such a tight squeeze that her wings sad. are ripped off, but she's not going to use them again. Once inside, she makes her way to the tiny, tightly packed internal flowers. And here within, she lays hundreds of eggs. She then carefully unpacks fig pollen from her abdomen and with it fertilizes the tiny flowers. When she's finished laying, she dies inside the unripe fig, no! alongside her eggs. The sunlight now slowly ripens the figs and helps the young wasps inside In to develop. Fruit. After just five weeks, the eggs start to hatch. The first to emerge are the golden wingless males. Hmm. Excellent. Great. Tiny fig hide to develop. After just fields. Oh my god, it's oh the video is just cut off. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll explain the rest of it then. I don't think that video got downloaded in entirety. Dude, Prezi's broken. Fig wasps. They're Shut up, David! All right. The whole video didn't get downloaded, but let me explain. Um, I don't want to eat figs anymore. Have you guys ever heard that when you eat a fig, you're eating a dead wasp. Have you guys heard that? I've seen that online a bunch of times. Yes, 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 no, 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 yes, yes, no. Is that every fig? Not necessarily. Naturally, yes. Tons of fig species, but every single wild variety requires this system of pollination. But there are some cultivated varieties that do not require the system. They tried to import figs into Hawaii, but they didn't import fig wasps. They produced no fruits. Then they were like, oh, shit. Right? Um, but here's how this works. I know you saw it in the video, but this, this is how this goes. Okay? Little happy, little happy wasp. Oh, it's so cute. I'm so happy. Okay? Um, here she is. Then she goes and she finds a fig fruit. Ooh, yay, perfect fig fruit, right? Then she goes in there. Wait. This hole is too small for her to enter. So when she squeezes through there, she loses her wings and her antenna. Her antennae. It doesn't matter though, because she's gonna die in there. She goes in there to die. So she crawls in there. She loses her wings and antenna when she goes in there. There's a bunch of, of uh, flowers inside of a fig fruit. This is an unripe fig fruit, right? There's a bunch of flowers in here. When she crawls in here, she pollinates all of these and lays eggs in them. Okay? 
Got it. She lays a bunch of eggs in there. And then she dies. Dead. And then she dies. So if you are eating a fig that has been pollinated by a fig wasp, yes, there is a dead fig wasp in here. But wait, there's more. Once the babies, this is called the birth, incest, and death speed run, right? That's the title of this. Once the babies hatch, there are males and females. They immediately start copulating. Why would they do that with their brothers and sisters, you may ask? That's a little weird. Because the males are born wingless. Wingless, they cannot leave this fig. They can't leave. They are literally born inside the fig to mate and then die. So they all hatch out of their eggs. They start boinking with their sisters as many as they can. They start killing each other. They're super brutal to each other. The males will kill each other. The brothers will kill each other. Um, people have tried to study fig wasps. There's a scientist that tried studying but fig wasps, but every time he opened a fig, there was only one male alive every time. All these things happen very fast. The perfect life cycle, the males, their, their lifespan is one to two days. Days! So this mom, this mom that flew into the fig, these babies, the daughters, that have just boinked with the sons, they fly out of this fig and they go do the exact same thing that she just did in another fig, all in 24 to 48 hours. But the males never get to leave because they're wingless. They also die in there. So it's not just that you're eating one dead fig, uh, it's that you're eating a lot of them, or a dead wasp, it's that you're eating a lot of them. This is really important for the fig fruit because it's the only way that it's pollinated because they get in there and they pollinate all these little flowers. Somebody asked how they maintain genetic diversity um, by boinking their brothers and sisters. And that is an excellent question that I'm going to answer in lengthy detail in one of these stories, but not quite yet. So their only purpose is to reproduce so they can pollinate. Yes, they only live one to two days. Would you know if you ate a bunch of wasps or no? Um, they're only about a millimeter to five millimeters long. They're very, very small um, and they're completely safe to eat. So even if you are eating a fig and there are wasps in there, one, you probably wouldn't know and two, it's not gonna hurt you. So it doesn't really matter. It's just that people don't like that idea. How do the figs benefit from this? They're getting pollinated. The females pollinate while they're laying their eggs in there. Is it still vegan? Uh, you know, interesting question. I would say that they are, but others might say that they're not. All right. Why figs? I don't know. Yeah, that's just how they evolved together. Um, next up, we have when your kids have an orgy inside of you and then you explode. This is again about bugs. Obviously, it's about bugs because this is an absolutely ridiculous, um, ridiculous sentiment. I was going to take pictures to do like size reference modeling for you guys so you got like a a feel <laughs> for what this looks like it, in size reference but um i would have had to use a drone <laughs> to show anyway i'll explain to you in a second so um a c a c a this is the name of the bug
That's the name of the bug. If you would like, instead, you may call it a mite, because it is a mite. All right, this is just the scientific name of this bug. So there's a mite, all right? It's very small. Mites are very small. Um, it's a parasitic mite. So you know what mealworms are, yeah? Mealworms and mealworm beetles. Cool. So this mite is a parasite of the lesser mealworm beetle. So the females will go around and they'll suck up mealworm eggs. They like eating mealworm eggs. It's what they eat, okay? So the little mites will go around and they'll eat mealworm eggs. And then their bodies will swell to 20 times, their bellies will swell 20 times their size. So they become like a little tennis ball with legs. It becomes impossible to move. This is what I was gonna show you. I was gonna lay on the ground and show you like what 20 times my belly size would be. Um, but unfortunately, we would need to use a drone to show, <laughs> to show that. Let me see if I can show you. Um, if I did, I don't think I can. If this is me. Yeah, no, I can't show you. I mean, it's like way bigger than that. <laughs> Forget it. The thought was there. Just imagine me 20 times my size, if you can imagine that, okay? So they become this tennis ball with little legs, right? Um, and then after she swells that much, um, she boinks, and then she's got a bunch of eggs inside of her. But she's already 20 times her size. So she can't fit anything more in there, but she has 50 babies inside of her. Remember what I said about, okay. Insects have a lot of incest. Again, I'm going to go through why they can do that in just a bit. But when they have such short lifespans and such a, such a limited ability to travel, sometimes they don't have enough freaking time or ability to mate with anybody except for their brothers and sisters because they're right there, right now. So... When she's got 50 babies in her stomach and she's already 20 times her size and they all hatch inside of her, then they start copulating, boinking, inside of their mom because they're ovoviviparous, they hatch inside and then they start mating inside the mom. But because there's so much in there and she's already 20 times her size, she usually explodes, like dies, like explodes, like explodes. And then the males rarely even get the chance to leave her body, like leave the corpse because their life spans up and they've already boinked and then they don't leave and then they just die and then the females will leave. Um, okay, so <laughs> that's the story of this mite. Bugs have to have sex with their brother, not all. A lot of bugs have to have sex with their brothers and sisters because their lifespans are short and they have a limited ability to travel. So why though, why can bugs have so much incest and we can't? <laughs> because um, we are diploids, right? Diploid. Bugs have a system called haplodiploidy. Wah! Yeah. Um, and I can either explain this in detail and give you guys a genetics lesson, or I can just tell you and you can take my word for it. Which would you prefer? Okay a lesson. So, <sighs> there's a lot to explain, okay? I'm gonna do my best. 
That is a female bee. This is a male bee. Naturally, yes. Bees are ha bees are a great example of haplodiploidy. Okay, so here's what a female's genetics looks like. Females are diploids. Okay, males are haploids. Diploid is two. Haploid is one. Okay, look, one. Yes. One, two, diploid, haploid. Okay, great. So, if a female were to, here's, okay, here's the other thing about this. You guys know how a Punnett square works? Connor told me not to do this. He thought you were too stupid. So we're gonna see if you really are too stupid. Um, when you're a diploid, you can make four combinations here, okay? You could be capital A, capital B, because you have those two things. You could be capital A, lowercase b, because you have those two things. You could be A, B, because you have those things. Or you could be lowercase A, lowercase b, because you have those things. This stupid boy, all he can do is capital A, capital B, because that's all he has. Right? So, if a female and a male were to mate... This is all the females possible combinations. This is the males possible combinations. This is a boink line. They have boinked. Oh. This is a boink line. They have, oh. This is a boink line. They have boinked. All right. So, so then, this is a Punnett square, okay? When you take these two combinations, when you do, like, Battleship, right? This and this. You get capital A, capital A, capital B, capital B. Same thing, here and here. You get capital A, capital A, capital B, lowercase b. A, A, B, B, A, A, B, B. Great. Great. These are all of the options that you can get when a male and a female mate. Right? What do you notice about all of these babies? One, two, one, two, one, two. They're all diploid. When a male and a female be boink, all of the babies are female. When a female lays eggs unfertilized by herself, what do you notice about all the babies? No boink line, there's no boinking. Haploid. What does this mean for bees? It means that males don't have a father. Because if you were born male, it was because a female laid unfertilized eggs. Your mother could be a virgin. But you do have a grandfather. Because if there was a female, it means there has to have been a male. If you're a male, you cannot have a son. Because if you're boinking with a female, you get all females. But if you're a male, you can have a grandson. Because if you mate with a female and you have females and she goes and lays unfertilized eggs, she can have sons.
Does that make sense? <laughs> I didn't think that was that complicated either. Dude, Connor and I had like a breakdown about how this was so complicated and you guys would not understand and how can I make it with shapes instead or tallies instead? And he was like, you have to explain genetic diversity to them then because, and I was like, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm really glad that you understand this. Great. So this is this is the system of, of haplodiploidy. Diploidy, okay. This is great for incest because it reduces the chance of overlapping recessive genes. That's the problem that we have with incest. When we're both diploids and we're closely genetically related, you get a lot of over. You can get a lot of overlap of recessive genes. This eliminates that problem because the female can have babies with unfertilized eggs, so they only have one copy of genes, okay? So this is the, this is the insect system of genetics, not for all insects, a lot of them. Bees, beetles, lots of beetles, okay, great. So, let me tell you a story. Learn more in five minutes than I did in a whole semester, thank you. Let me tell you a story. There's a little beetle. It's called a button beetle. Ew. <laughs> There's a little beetle, it's called a button beetle. Okay, it's called a button beetle because sometimes they live in buttons, literal buttons, okay? Some alt naturally they live in dates. But anyway, um, so, this is a button beetle. This is a baby, okay? This is a baby boy, this is a baby girl. Right after they hatch, they must boink. That's a boink line. I'm not really gonna use it, I just, you know what a boink line is now, so I'm using this as a, you know what? They're in love. <laughs> they got a boink. Okay, all of their brothers and sisters after hatching of button beetles, they all try to boink each other, the brothers and sisters, right? But, oh no, really sad, um, this uh, sister, she didn't get to boink with her brother because he thought she was ugly. So she's all alone. No! But her purpose in life, in her, her like few day life, is to uh, reproduce. Reproduce females, by the way, because they're more valuable than males. I'm not gonna explain why. <laughs> Generally speaking, they just are, okay? So, she didn't get to boink, okay? So then she leaves. She's like, oh, this is so sad. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go off by myself. But then, she remembers Then she remembered, God, you can't see black. Then she remembers, wait a second, I can lay my own eggs without a man. I don't need a man. I can be independent and I can lay all these eggs myself, by myself. Yes, slay, queen. I am a, uh, haplodiploidy, okay? She laid all these eggs without the help of a man. She is a virgin, this woman. So, what are her babies? This is a test. All boys. And isn't that convenient? <laughs> Isn't that so convenient? This is exactly what she needed. <laughs> this is exactly what she needed. <clears throat> Boink. 
She's not a virgin anymore. She has sex with her sons. And then... And then... She eats them. <laughs> Why? Because of resources. Because it's resourceful and all she needed was a male to reproduce with so that she can oop so that she can go lay more eggs that have now been fertilized by a male which makes them what female Mission complete. Slay. Can the males even eat? A lot of male insects are born without even without wings, so they can't travel without mouth parts, so they eventually just starve and die. They're, <laughs> they're literally just born to mate with their sisters and then die. That's the story of the button beetle. Uh, in summary, female boinks, tries to boink with brothers and sisters, um, is unsuccessful, goes off by herself, lays eggs by herself, gets a bunch of boys, boinks all her sons, then eats her sons, then lays fertilized eggs that were fertilized by her sons, makes a bunch of girls, she dies. Done. It's a circle of life. You want to see the little freak? <laughs> That's the mite that blows up to like 20 times its size. This is the little freak button beetle. <laughs> Actually, my drawings were pretty freaking accurate, if you ask me. That's a little certified freaky freak. She crazy. <laughs> she, she crazy. Oh my god. She's, yeah. So anyway, that's the button beetle. That's the story of the button beetle. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Um... Next, we have a uh, death by incestual orgy. Um, any guesses? <laughs> I know we're going back on the incest thing, but I just explained to you why it happens so often. Why, why you're going to hear about it so much. So yes, it is a bug. Okay, it is, it is a bug. Um, it's a couple bugs involved. So there's actually, there's a moth, right? Oh, it's just a little happy moth. So cute. Oh my God. Okay. And then um, there's a mite, another mite. I'm not even going to tell you the scientific name because I just don't feel like it matters. And I don't think you're going to remember it anyway. So um, there's a little mite. <laughs> there's a mite. Okay. The, the mite is sitting in wait in this beautiful flower. Okay. Then the moth goes to pollinate the flower. And then the mite goes, oh, stupid, joke's on you. I'm going to crawl in your freaking ear. <laughs> it's a parasitic mite, okay? The mite goes and crawls in the moth's ear. This is an army worm moth. The, the moth looks like this. That's what the moth looks like, okay? It's a very cute moth. Anyway, so... The mite crawls into the moth's ear, and then when the mite is in there, he takes a little sword. He doesn't really have a sword, it's just a mouth part. And he pierces the, 
He pierces through the tympanic membrane of the moth. It causes permanent deaf deafness. It makes it so the moth cannot hear anymore. The moth. The moth. He's deaf. He's deaf now. Um, why? Because the mite is a parasite and it's really handy to be in the ear because it's a very safe place to be and they feed off the moth's blood. So they go in there and then they just like drink the moth's blood <laughs> from in there. <laughs> from in there. Uh -huh. uh, then the mite gets real comfy inside of a, uh, this is the moth's ear. This is the little mite living. Um, then the mite gets really comfy and then it lays a bunch of eggs. Remember, this story is called Death by Incestual Orgy. So guess what happens? Now. All the eggs hatch and they all start boinking. Inside of the moth's ear. Remember how I said that a lot of males are not equipped to live past boinking their sisters? It's <laughs> Ella just heard that as she was walking out. Remember I said a lot of male insects don't live past boinking their sisters? Uh, these are no exception. The Males, once they boink all their sisters, they die in there. Inside the moth's ear. They just die. And they stay in there forever. And the females leave. But, I will say something that's really considerate, if, if you want to give the mites a cookie for a problem that they caused. Um, when the females leave, they leave a trail of pheromones out of that ear. And so, the next, um, the next mite that goes to be a parasite inside this this moth's ear, they go back into the same one. So they only go deaf in one ear. Instead of two. Which is actually really considerate. Why? Because going deaf in two ears is bad for the moth and uh, it does more damage to them. And if the moth dies, then they have no place to be a freaking parasite. So. Yeah, it's really nice. So that ringing in my ear, this is only moths. They don't do this to us. Don't worry. I don't have notes for how long that cycle is. I don't know. Um, next up, we have Uno Reverse Genitalia Edition where the females have a penis and the males have a vagina-like structure. I say penis because I mean that. Because, and this is controversial, and I, some people don't think this, but the technical definition of a penis is a reproductive structure that transfers gametes from one member of the mating pair to another. That's what she's got. What am I talking about? <laughs> what am I talking about? I'll show you. Bark lice. Whoa, penis. <laughs> Sorry, should have warned you. Um, I'm talking about bark lice. It's a little, it's a little soft-bodied, uh, flighted insect. Feeds on lichen, fungus. Lives in Brazilian caves. That's her penis. Some people don't like that because they're like, you should say penis-like structure because it's a female. But technically, she's got a reproductive organ that transfers gametes from one organism to another. That's a penis. Did you see this picture? That's her up there. It's labeled. You're welcome. That's her on top. That's him. On the bottom. So she's a male? No. Idiot. <laughs> no. Um, 
they have just evolved external genitalia very differently uh, than what what how it normally works. But it's also kind of the same. So the females penetrate the males. It's called a gynosone. It's a penis-like protrusion. But it is, I would argue, it is a penis. Um, and the male has a vagina-like organ. It's really, I mean, it's a hole. Um, the male does ejaculate. So it is a male. The male does, no, 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 no. The male does not get pregnant. The female penetrates the male with the penis. The male ejaculates inside of his own body. And then the penis goes from him up her penis to her. <laughs> <laughs> like a vacuum. You want me to draw it? <laughs> I'm not going to draw it. <laughs> Uno reverse. It's like a straw. Yeah. Um, that is not a penis. Yes, it freaking is. Yes, it is. Because it transfers, gam transfers gametes from one to another. It never says where the origin of the gametes have to be from. Okay. She goes like this. This is the, the <laughs> This is the bark lice. Here she is. Here's her penis. Here he is. Penis is inside of this guy. He ejaculates in here. His sperm goes up like that. So she's not transferring gametes. Yes, she is. <laughs> the gametes are being transferred through her penis. Transfer, transfer, transfer. Hello, Lindsay. <laughs> How does it feel? I don't know. What an insane question to ask me. I've never done that. <laughs> um, so you want to know another crazy thing about this? Guess how long this, this process lasts. Guess. One hour, one second, 30 days, three minutes, two seconds, four seconds, five seconds. I appreciate, you know what? I'm not going to be mean to you guys. That's a fine guess, and I understand why you would make that guess, but you're wrong. It's a 40 to 70 hours takes them 40 to 70 hours to copulate, to boink. They boink for 40 to 70 hours straight. You may ask, how the frick? They stay like this? They stay like this for 40 to 70 hours? Are you freaking serious? Yes. Why? Because her penis doesn't look like this. It looks like this. <laughs> Not only is her penis barbed, which is a very, I mean, she took that right out of the playbook. A lot of male animals have barbed penises. Cats have barbed penises. It's so that it's harder. It guarantees more time for copulation and successful insemination because it's harder to get out of there. A lot of animals have barbed penises. You're right. I always do the barbs the wrong way. Like a Christmas tree. So they have, the females have barbed penises and the penis also inflates at the base of the, of the gynosome. The gynosome is the penis. It, they can inflate the base of it. So it's really, really freaking in there. And that's how they can do it for 40 to 70 hours because they're stuck together. Actually, they have tried in lab settings to pull them apart um, and the genitalia remains stuck together and the males rip, rip at the abdomen. They rip in half. So how big is it? Bark lice are only three millimeters long. 
Uh, so proportionally, like really freaking small. So that's how bark lice work. Um, you may be asking, why? <laughs> you may be thinking, what the heck? Why? Um, because they live, remember how I said they live in caves? They live in cave settings. Um, so both resources in terms of mates and in terms of nutrients are very, very hard to find. I will repeat, the females are more important than the males. Um, so this system gives the females all of the power inside that cave. Um, also the spermatophore, the sperm that they get has nutrients in it. So the females want to mate with as many males as possible because they get nutrients, because nutrients are so hard to find in the cave. So this allows them every time they find a male, whether he wants to or not, uh, she can boink and then she can slurp and she can be nourished. So, yeah. Again, this is what her penis looks like. That blue thing. It's actually pretty massive uh, in comparison to her body size. All right. Next up. Next up, to love is to disintegrate and die. I will give you a hint. You might be excited to learn this. Uh, this is not about a bug. You wanna play some Pictionary? It's not a bug. People are saying insect, spider, octopus. I'm gonna draw it. You can guess what it is. Anglerfish. <laughs> Correct. Incredible. This is an anglerfish. I've never drawn an anglerfish before, okay? It's, <laughs> it's kind of what they look like. Yes, in Nemo, okay, you've seen in Finding Nemo, the fish with the, the bioluminescent on the front. Parasitic males, good, yes. Um, anglerfish, uh, their sex life is very interesting and very reminiscent of deadbeat men. It's called sexual parasitism. If this is a female anglerfish, this is a male. The size difference is absolutely insane absolutely insane okay um and there's a bunch of different species of anglerfish so i didn't get a number for like what how many times smaller the male is or how many times larger the female is um but uh crazy difference how do they do it well i'm glad you asked this male let me blow him up here This male lacks many things. I hate him. I'm getting rid of him. This male lacks many things. What does he not have? He does not have a digestive system.
a respiratory system. He may have a circulatory system. Or he may have a respiratory system and not a circulatory system. Is he alive? Basically, no. He's missing many things that he needs. You know who has all of these things? She does. Of course she does. Yes, you guys do as well. Okay? So... He's like, oh my gosh, what a perfect opportunity. Let me bite her. Let me excrete enzymes onto her skin that fuse me to her. So we become one. And then she can give me access to her digestive, digestive system. So he can get nutrients and her circulatory system so that he can get gas exchange and all he will do is provide her with sperm so he will inseminate her he's a bit of a cuck though um, she can have up to eight of these guys latched onto her at once. <laughs> Which is kind of sick. Um, so there is competition in sperm delivery, for sure. Um, but yeah, that's just a little quick, little quick story about men not being shit. Can she have multiple partners? Very much so. These are all, these are all partners. Do they stay on there forever? Yeah, until they die. Yeah. How do they find the females? I think. Thank you for the 22 months. I'm sure there are also like pheromones involved or something. Are they her babies? Basically. Quick story about anglerfish. All right. Um, you guys want to see what that looks like? That's an anglerfish, first of all. That's a female. That's a male attached to her at the bottom. You see that? You see that? All right, this is some footage of what they actually look like. Crazy, crazy animal. <laughs> There's a sea devil type of anglerfish. There's a male attached to the female. She's only got one. Well, this part isn't important. Cool. So to love is to disintegrate and die. Um, there you go. Anglerfish. 
Um, we are done with insects, actually. The last two that we have are not insects. I have another mammal um, coming up here. Uh, we have the one and done. Thank you for the 33 months. The one and done. <laughs> Again, the mammal stories are just not as interesting as the insect stories. So this one's going to be relatively quick. But um, essentially, there is a marsupial from Australia. It looks like a little mouse. This is what it looks like. <laughs> He's cute. He's cute. It's called an atechnus. 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 It's a marsupial. It looks like a rodent, like it looks like a little mouse, but it's not. It's a marsupial. Um, so around 11 months of age, those guys start irreversibly producing sperm. Like they start and then they don't stop. Um, and it changes their behavior dramatically. Um, they become ravenous for mating. Um... They mate with as many females as possible, starting at about 11 months of age. Uh, and every encounter that they have with the female, the mating lasts, guess how long? Actually, it doesn't really make sense when you think about the goal here. Again, with the five seconds. Again, with the... It's uh, 14 hours. Up to 14 hours, these encounters will last with females. Um, they mate so furiously though, and they like stop eating and stop taking care of themselves because their sole purpose at 11 months old is just to mate vigorously. Um, and then they start like dying. They start, uh, their bodies start to fall apart. They start losing fur, like all over their bodies. Uh, they start to have internal bleeding sometimes. Um, immune system failure, their bodies get overtaken by gangrene, um, and then a few, just a few weeks shy of their first birthday, they die because they've had too much sex. Some people are saying, why? <laughs> why would that be a benefit? Um... The theory is that they are fully sacrificing themselves for the next generation. Realistically, again, males can go around and inseminate a bunch of females, but we need very few males because one male can inseminate, like, at this rate, God knows how many females. And then you don't really need them anymore because they've already inseminated so many females. Um, so they just self-sacrifice for the next generation. Plus, they have a really short lifespan anyway. So you might as well get in the grind set. Um, I guess. I don't know. He means business, you know. The last story that I have to tell you guys about today is the three foot long exploding sperm bomb. Whoever guesses what animal this is gets a cookie. The three foot long exploding sperm bomb. Octopus, correct. Let me show you how long three feet is. This is one foot. <laughs> Two feet. <laughs> it's about three feet long. <laughs> That's a big exploding sperm bomb. I didn't have a tape measure. The precision. Yeah, octopus. Octopus have a, uh, octopuses have a uh, three foot long exploding sperm bomb. Giant octopuses do, there's lots of species. 
right? Um, but here's how octopus mating works. If this is an octopus, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, where do you think his penis is? Yeah, I have I have talked about this on my stream before. Yeah, it is one of the legs. Penis. That is his penis. Where do you think her Vagina is. In her head. Yeah, about here. Scientists sometimes call it their nostril. Don't mind the anatomy of my smiley faces. Yeah. Um, in the nostril. So... Um, there are a few ways of insemination here. One is the reach. So one is they'll just go like this and like reach in there. You want to see what that looks like? That's a giant octopus, giant Pacific octopus. This is what the, the reach around method looks like. Look, there he is, there's his penis. He's reaching. So the reason, well, I mean, you guys know how a penis works. He's passing a spermatophore packet, a sperm packet, into her nostril. It's not actually a nostril. Into her reproductive organ. Somebody said she doesn't seem into it. Um, you're not wrong. Female octopuses do not fuck with male octopuses. Okay? Um, so the reach around method is a method. Right? But there are several others because sometimes the females will eat the males. Because they don't like them. Um, other methods are detachment. So they just detach, they reach in there and then they detach it and they just leave it there. And they're like, all right, I'm out. Don't worry about me. I'm leaving. Right? Uh, another method, uh, they can detach their, it's called a hectocotylus, their penis arm. Um, there could be an octopus over here. And he could detach his hectocotylus, and it'll swim. Over to her. <laughs> Drone dick. <laughs> yeah, projectile peen, sperm missile. Yeah. Torpedo. Correct. Pocket rocket. All right, great. Good job, guys. I think that's good. Ballistic. Yep, I think you get the point. Um, so 
They can detach their penis. Their penis can swim on its own over to her. They can do the reach around. The cool thing about her um, is she can collect uh, multiple. She can have several at a time in there. She can carry them around if she wants to. Um, so, yeah, pretty cool. Um, the bummer about octopus mating is after they mate, they have a pretty severe post-nut depression. Um, it's called senescence. Um, they stop eating entirely. Uh, and they go into caring for the babies. The male die. The males die shortly after mating, um, and so do the females. Once she lays the eggs, she gets depressed, and then she lays the eggs, and then she dies. Um. So, yeah. There's your story about octopus. Um, some females can be six and a half feet in length, while males are just one inch in length. What? Six and a half feet versus one inch in length um so the size difference can be significant that's why the reach around method is not safe the one that you saw they were pretty close in size um but actually they can be one two three four five six octopus versus that's to scale that's a male and a female. Six and a half feet to, to one foot. There you go, you're welcome. Um, their weight ratio can be anywhere from 10,000 to one to 40,000 to one. The giant octopus passes a spermatophore that's over three feet long to the female giant octopus. It contains more than 10 billion sperm, and then it explodes in the female reproductive tract. 10 billion sperm is a lot. Um, per human ejaculation, average human males do 20 to 150 million sperm per ejaculation. 20 to 150 million, whereas giant octopus do 10 billion, which is just astronomically different number um so it's about 100 times more sperm than people uh, but also giant octopuses can reach 30 feet long and they can weigh 600 pounds so it's kind of fair they're much larger I think that's all I have. <laughs> Admittedly, I didn't have nearly as much time this year as I did last year to uh, research and give you guys a bunch of information. Ow. Um, but I did my best to get this stream in anyway, even though there's a ton going on right now. Um, I learned so much. Did I miss anything about hyenas? Yes, they have an eight inch long clitoris that they pee and copulate and birth through. I hope you guys learned a lot. I hope you, uh, I hope you have some stuff that you can, you can go home and share with your friends and family. Uh, Push Pop arrived yesterday. I will be revealing Push Pop, our newest ambassador, on Wednesday. Um, you can run it now if you want. Um, I'll be revealing our new ambassador on Wednesday at the Valentine's Day event, where we are also raffling off all of the plushies that I've made of the ambassadors. Amazing, exciting. Um, 
Stompy's birthday is also on Wednesday. And... Do we have a collab on... Do we have a collab tomorrow? <sighs> we have a collab tomorrow with Emily Wang. Um, we were going to have a Rob CD collab this month as well. I am rescheduling it, is the plan. Um, but tomorrow at 2 p.m., we have a collab with Emily Wang. And then on Wednesday, we have the Valentine's Day event. No, Emily Wang, not Extra Emily. Emily Wang, TFT player. I've never met her before. I actually know like nothing about her. So <laughs> it'll be on her channel. So you guys have to watch it over there. Uh yeah, I did I did message Julian Salamita about coming out to do a collab, which is uh insane. Not just I messaged him, like he talked about it on his stream and then I messaged him and now he knows what this is and he's like, Oh yeah, great. So actually might happen, which is crazy. Uh, freaking streamer awards is this weekend. <laughs> Somehow. Also. Um. And I have something to show you. Really quick. One red baron, fully loaded, hands on style. That their pizza is big enough for the both of us. Sure is. But this town ain't. It's pretty insane, Adam. So, Lonely Pete and Really Rude Rick learned that a punch in the face might be fun, but sharing a fully loaded Red Baron with friends is always tastier. Yeah, that's about all we have time for today. Giddy up. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for watching. All right, um, I will be live at some point, either today or tomorrow, God knows when, to uh, make Valentine's Day enrichment for Wednesday. Um, and I will do that on the Alvaez channel. You'll get a guest star notification and a Discord notification. Or you can sign up for website notifications if you'd like. See ya at, huh? See ya at some point o'clock. See you tomorrow for the club. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. 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 Oh.